Hello viewers. Today we are going to discuss about electrical engineering laboratory. Experiment number 9 that is speed control of a DC shunt motor. So in this we are going to use the speed, we are going to use the DC shunt motor. For the DC shunt motor we are going to control the speed with the help of two methods. One is called as a armature control method, another one is called as a flux control method. So first let me give the explanation about the title of the experiment. Here we are having the shunt motor. This DC shunt motor is going to be controlled with the help of two rheostats. So one rheostat, one controlling method is called as the armature voltage control method. Another one is called as the field control method. Is otherwise it's called as a flux control method. So for this experiment speed control of DC shunt motor, we need some equipments. The required equipments are voltmeter from 0 to 30 volt, 3, 300 volt. MC that is moving coil since here we are using the DC supply so we have to use the moving coil so it is very very important while selecting the meters of DC supply we have to use the moving coil meter and ammeter ammeter ranges from 0 to 2 ampere this is also the moving coil meter and then rheostat from 0 to 360 ohm up to 1.2 ampere this is a wire wound rheostat and then one more rheostat we are going to use that is 0 to 25 ohms rheostat that is also 1.2 ampere wire wound and then we need the digital tachometer the device which used to measure the speed of the motor and some connecting wires as per the requirements. So now these are the components what we are going to use for this experiment. Here we are having the analog ammeters and then analog voltmeters, fuse and then variable rheostat and then digital tachometer. Ammeter is a device which used to measure the current. Always the ammeter should be connected in series for any circuit. If it is like this, see here it is mentioned like a small dash is there that it shows the direct current and then here we are having the analog voltmeter. Analog voltmeter also, analog voltmeter is a device which used to measure the voltage. Always the old meter should be connected in parallel or across of any circuit. Then coming for the fuse. Fuse is a current limiting device or it is a protecting device which allows the rated current. Say for example if the fuse carrier range is 10 ampere, it will allow only the maximum of 10 ampere of current. If more than 10 ampere current flows then the fuse will get melt and then it won't give supply for the upcoming components or appliance or any device. So fuse is a protecting device which limits the current. Whenever it is normal condition, the fuse will make the circuit. Whenever it is abnormal condition, the fuse will break the circuit. So this is about the fuse. Next, next coming to the variable rheostat. This picture it shows the variable rheostat. Here the main thing is we are going to discuss about cut in and cut out. What is the meaning of cut in? Cut in means adding the resistor. Cut out. Cut out means we are not adding the resistor. Resistor does not account in the say in the circuit. So that is called as a cut out position. So whenever the rheostat is cut in position, the resistor will be added. Whenever the re resistor is cut out, the resistor is not added in that circuit. So this is called as a variable rheostat. So, so we can easily vary the resistance. This is the wire wound rheostat and the digital tachometer. Here we are having the infrared uh, sensor will be there. With the help of that, if we hit that light sensor on the you know, uh, rotating drum, it will rotate the RPM, it will find out the revolution per minute or uh, rotation per minute and then it, it will show the display. It may be a 1500 RPM or it may be a 1200 RPM so and so. It will show the speed of running speed of the motor. Next, we are going to discuss about the starter. The main thing is in this uh, DC shunt, uh, speed control of DC shunt motor, we are using three point starter. So three point starter, why it is named as a three point starter? Because in this starter, we are connecting the line. L stands for line, F it stands for field, and A it stands for the ammeter, sorry, armature. A it stands for the armature. Please note down, A stands for the armature. So it is called as a three point starter. So three points are connected. We have connected here, so it is called as a three point starter. We are having different um, starters are there, two point starter, four point starter then uh, DOL starter these are there these are the different types of starters so here why we are using the starter if uh, starter is used 
Starter is also a protecting device which limits the current and allow the motor in a desired speed. What is called desired speed? The rated speed of the motor. That is the rated speed of the motor is 1500 rpm. That is 1500 rpm. So if we are not using the starter in any circuit, the motor, what happens? The motor winding get damaged because in rush amount of current will flow towards the windings. So the winding get damaged or else the motor it doesn't run at a desired speed. It will be, it will run more than the desired speed. The desired speed is 1500 rpm. So it will be behind that there 1500 rpm. So it may cause some accidents or damage who is handling with that motor. So we have to use this starter. So starter is a current limiting device. How it is limiting the current? See here the setup is like this. So here having the position 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 like this. So here all it is connected in series R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. So whenever we are giving the current here, the current will flow towards R1, R2, R3, R4, R5. Then it will come to the winding. It will go for the field winding. Then due to the excitation, this armature it starts to rotate. So whenever it is in this position, the current should, it will flow through all the resistors. So the current value will be very less. So the motor, it start, it doesn't start initially. When I am moving the handle to the position 2, whenever it is coming to the position 2, at the time R1 is cut out and then R2, R3, R4, R5 will be, only 4 resistors will be in the account. So the resistor value is slowly decreasing. So the current value will get slowly increased. So the field winding get excited due to this excitation, this armature, it starts to rotate slowly. So whenever the same fashion, I'm moving to the position three, four, five, whenever it is coming to five and whenever it come to this position six, that is called running position. At the time, all the resistor R2, R3, R4, R5, including R1, all the resistors value are cut out. Once it become cut out, the current uh, resistor value will be very least. Then the current value will be more. So the, the field winding get excited in a good condition then it will allow the motor to run in a desired speed. So that is called as the desired speed. The rated speed is called as a desired speed. That is the main purpose of the starter. So here, here I am showing you that this is the, uh, what is it, uh, structural view of a starter. The same, all, this is the uh, line, single line diagram of a three-point starter. This is the structural view of the three-point starter. Here we are having different states are there. That is one, two, three, four, five. Like. So here it is in the position one, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 like that. This is the, this is called as a run position. This is called, otherwise it's called as a no volt coil. Whenever I'm giving the supply, this point, it acts as electromagnet. So when I'm moving the handle towards this in no volt coil or run position, this is act as electromagnet, it will attract this handle. So the handle will attract here whenever the supply is present. Whenever the supply is absent, this it act as a soft iron and then it will demagnetize, it lose its handle and then handle it will kick back to its original position that is called off position. So this is about the three point starter. See here it is, here it is connected as a LAF that is a line armature and field. So it is called as a three point starter. It's a very, very important concept in this speed control of a DC shunt motor. Now we are going to discuss about the types of winding in a DC motor. Here. We are, as we as we discussed that that field winding and then armature winding are there. Since it is called as a DC shunt motor, in this the field winding and then armature winding. This is called the field winding. So the field winding and then armature winding are connected across each other or parallel each other. So the meaning of the shunt is parallel or across. So this setup will be this is the structural diagram of a DC shunt motor. So next we are going to discuss about the circuit diagram of a DC. Uh, speed control of a DC shunt motor. So here we are giving the DC supply and then here we are having the DPSTS that is a double pole single throw switch and fuse the rating of the fuse is 10 ampere and then here we are having one ammeter, ammeter which measures the current of the line current how much the input current is given for the circuit. So it is connected to the L. So here the MC the meaning of the MC is that moving coil. If you are using the DC supply always you have to prefer the moving coil type meters and then from the field this is the starter here as already we discussed that uh, the starter it has a starter it has a three uh, points will be there line field and armature the, so the field next the field is connected to the arm uh, to the ammeter the ammeter ranges from 0 to 2 ampere and then following the other end of the ammeter it is connected to the variable rheostat now here I clearly given that cut out position and cut in position. 
see the rheostat which is connected to the field is called as a field rheostat and then rheostat which is connected to the armature is called as a armature rheostat so here the rheostat which is connected to the field it should be in the cutout position and the rheostat which is connected to the armature it should be in the cut in position you can see the arrow mark the arrow mark is in the starting position that is called as a cut out position when the arrow mark is coming that now we are moving the variable rheostat to this position that is called as a cut in position so here the field winding the rheostat which is connected to the field winding we have to select 0 to 360 ohm and 1.2 ampere this is about the rating of the field winding rheostat and then following that rheostat we have to connect the field winding the field winding a z is connected to the uh, z is connected and the other terminal of the field winding it should be connected to the negative terminal of a dc supply next coming to the armature so from the point a we are having one rheostat this is called as a armature rheostat always the armature rheostat it should be in the cut in position while you are starting the dc shunt motor so at that time here uh, the the other end of the rheostat it should be connected to the armature of one terminal that is called a and then a a is again it is connected to the negative then following that we have to go for the voltmeter the voltmeter which should be connected across the armature winding so as already we discussed that parallel connection means starting terminal should be connected to the starting terminal and ending terminal should be connected to the ending terminal and so on here see here the main thing just uh, from the title of the experiment is speed control of a dc shunt motor what is meant by shunt as already we discussed that shunt means it is a parallel that is parallel connection so two windings are going to be connected in parallel so here the main two windings are one is called as a field winding another one is called as the armature winding so as per the title of the experiment the field winding and then armature winding both are connected in parallel so it is called as the shunt field shunt winding this is this is called as a speed control of a dc shunt motor so now i am going to enter into the procedure procedure what we are going to do here we, uh, we discussed that we are having two controls controlling speed method is there one is called as the armature uh, control method another one is called as a flex control method so first we are going to discuss about the armature control method so in this armature control method we are going to calculate the armature voltage and then speed of the motor and then while coming for the uh, flex control method or field control method we are going to find out the current as well as the speed of the motor so this is very very important so the procedure is first for armature control before going to the armature control method first what we have to what they are supposed to do we have to vary this field winding rheostat for certain value and then here we have to check the speed of the motor if the speed of the motor is near or it is exactly to the 1500 rpm because why i am selecting 1500 rpm means the rated speed of the motor is 1500 rpm so that 1500 we have to change this rheostat from cut out we have to slowly increase as a cut in position and then we have to find out the speed of the motor whether it is 1400 or 1500 once it obtained to the rated speed that is 1500 rpm here this rheostat should be kept as a constant and then what we are supposed to do slowly we have to vary this rheostat from cut in position to cut out position so whenever i am moving this rheostat that is at armature rheostat from cut in position i am moving slowly by step by step first if i am moving to this position at the time i have to note down the uh, armature voltage and then speed of the motor next second position whenever i am moving towards slightly i am moving uh, out, cut out position i am increasing the rheostat from this position to this position so at the time also i am supposed to do the find out the voltage and then armature voltage and then speed of the motor slowly we have to do for 5 to 6 readings so at the time this uh, variable rheostat which is connected to the armature winding uh, which it will go towards like this and then it will come to cut out position at one certain stage so after that what we are supposed to do again this then now the armature control method is completed so again what we are supposed to do we have to kick back we have to rivet back from the cut out position of the armature winding from cut out position to cut in position once it comes to cut in position at that time the motor will run at a desired speed and then again this field winding rheostat now the field winding rheostat is in this position imagine it is in this position consider this is in this position and then slowly we have to vary this rheostat 
and then we have to find out the current that is the field current and then speed of the motor for this also we are supposed to take 5 to 6 readings and then uh, we have to take the current that is the field current and then motor speed after that after all the 5 to 6 readings are taken again this rheostat whenever the rheostat in this position that is that field rheostat in this cut in position again this rheostat it should be slowly come to its cut out position to this in this place after that we have to switch off the supply that is called as a uh, from the dpst we have to switch off then the uh, what is it uh, then the starter the three point starter automatically it will come back to its original position so this is about the um, uh, working uh, this is about the explanation of uh, of the speed control of dc shunt motor so here i given the uh, description like the, what is called dpsts double pole single throw switch and then mc mc is a moving coil whenever the dc supply is given we have to be clearly note down, note down that mc is a moving coil type this type of meter only we are supposed to select l stands for line f stands for field a is the armature and then here zz this terminal is called as a field winding zz is called as a field winding and then a a is called as the armature winding a a is called as a armature winding so since the field winding and then armature winding both are connected in parallel so it is called as a dc shunt motor here we discuss about the speed control of a dc shunt motor so there are two types one is called as a armature control another one is called as a flux control or it is called as a field control so finally we'll get the graph like this speed versus armature voltage and then speed versus field current uh, i hope you enjoy this video thank you for watching this video subscribe support and share let us learn thank you